did you have time to check out the um, Expo application services announcement? Yes, I saw the Expo application services announcement. And I think um, this addresses like one of my biggest concerns with Expo actually. And I'm really happy that they did it because we did a video recently and what I said was like, okay, currently Expo, what they are doing is like, they are investing so much and um, to cater to the developer community and there was like no way we could give it back to them, which created this imbalance. And now with Expo application services, they are starting to introduce a business aspect in it um a great service and not only does it help the people who are already in the expo ecosystem but it also helps the people who use bare react native which is awesome and at the same time they tackle a problem which honestly is so frustrating to deliver your app to the app store and to the play store this build system can get so complicated. So yes. it's great to see them tackle this. Absolutely. And I think that's really part of... Uh, I saw so much excitement around this announcement. And I think part of it is that... I'm just making a guess. I'm just talking here. I'm not... But that people, they use productively Bitrise, Microsoft App Center. They use it. But I don't think anyone loves these products. And I feel like with Expo, because... You know, for instance, with what they did with what is formerly known as the Expo client, they, you know, they are known for, you know, making things seamless. But I think people are excited because they're like, oh, they can bring the same level of uh, seamlessness to the CI and delivery of uh, my apps. And that's, that I think that that's why people got super excited. Indeed. I mean, if you think about all these services like uh, Microsoft One, Bitrise, and uh, like some even more generic thing like uh, GitHub Actions is that they don't help you if you if your use case is React Native. Um, there are so many complicated things um, to handle. For example, code signing. This is yes probably like the the big <laughs> the biggest struggle ever. Yes, absolutely. Um, but Expo is like agnostic to the fact that we are all React Native developers and they are trying to help us with that. So that's a really good thing. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of uh, technical details part of the original announcement and uh, obviously things are still quite early and like even the pricing, I'm not even sure if the pricing is uh, definitive pricing. Right now it's still not available in the free tier and I think it's written that it will be. Lots of uh, details. But talking about the bigger picture, and, you know, it's funny because I was on my bike uh, coming here and I was thinking about, you know, 2021 predictions. You know, do I have predictions or trends? And I think I have only one prediction. So let me put it out there and we'll see next year if uh, right. this big yeah. entry. It's on video. We, yeah. We will have to check at the end <laughs> of the year. So my prediction is that by end of, so in one year, you know, like you said, also Expo, you know, now treating uh, bare apps as, you know, Expo apps as being one or, or the same thing is that, you you know, the way TypeScript has become completely seamless part of uh, React Native projects. So it's using the same tooling, Babel, ESLint. It's not a different language. It's not different build step. The same level of seamlessness and integration will be brought to Expo by the end of the year. That's my prediction. That, you know, when you do a React Native project, it's two flavors, TypeScript, not TypeScript, Expo, not Expo. And the TypeScript question is not a question anymore since one year or so. And I believe it's going to become the same with Expo and they seem to be certainly in that direction. They also rename, uh, so now it's, the Expo client is called Expo Go to, you know, emphasize the fact that it's only one of the clients. So the browser is a client. And, you know, also you can have uh, other types of clients, which are which is your app, essentially. And so that's my prediction for 2021. Wow. I like it. And, I mean, that's so beautiful because 
We don't have to start a war. We don't have to like bring out the arguments, expo or no expo. We can all be friends and I am happy that like the lines between them are blending much more together. Yeah. And uh, because in the end we all want to be happy and we don't want to make the wrong decision. And yeah, so things are becoming de facto standards and like it feels the JavaScript fatigue is over. And that feels weird almost, isn't it? Because we're used to such a different world. You know, flow, TypeScript, which uh, framework and so on. And now things seem to be quite uh, standardized. Yeah, it's nice. And um, well, I never had like any JavaScript fatigue in the beginning, but I'm, I of did. course, we, <laughs> of course, there was like this, um, this time where like, The things have transformed so much and some people have placed their eggs in the wrong basket, like in the coffee script basket. And now it's like not really the standard anymore. Um, but it feels like... I mean, you really least... feel for these people <laughs> who went for coffee script and because you man it's the second time you mention it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's quite tragic. To yes. <laughs> um... So, so yeah, but I feel like with this React TypeScript um, Webpack stuff and on the React Native side, um, it, it also like is maturing and feels like it's here to stay. And I'm not afraid to put my eggs in the wrong basket.